All right, retiring the name. Liz Peek, your reaction? <laughs> well, look, Maria, I don't think that Ron DeSantis had a path forward. I think you could argue from the beginning he didn't mm. because he really embraced all of Donald Trump's policies, and his only real hope was that voters were going to be tired of Donald Trump and look for an alternative in the same lane. And really, that just never happened. So I think he was right to get out of the race. Why get humiliated in New Hampshire, which he might well have done? Uh, I think this certainly strengthens Donald Trump because uh, clearly uh, all the polling for, uh, for DeSantis followers showed Trump and he were basically, you know, basically sharing the same voters. So I think it's going to be a problem for Nikki Haley if she was behind by 10 or 15 in New Hampshire. Now it's probably 15 to 20. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, Cheryl. I wouldn't be surprised if certain donors who were against Trump uh, encourage DeSantis to get out of the way. They want to see what Haley can do. They want to see her showing here in New Hampshire right now. Right, and she issued a statement saying that, look, only one state has voted so far, which is true. Half of those votes went to Donald Trump, and then she says, but half and did not. We're not a country of coronation. So she's making it clear that she is going to stay in this race. I think mm. New Hampshire is going to be, though, make or break for Haley. She's about 11 points behind Trump in New Hampshire right now, according to the latest polling. So we're going to have to to see, you know, obviously tomorrow is is a very crucial day. But then think about what's next, Maria, and that's South Carolina. And Senator Tim Scott, that's her home state, and Senator Tim Scott has come out and endorsed former President Trump. So are, are the cards really getting stacked against her? Yes, but we shall see what New Hampshire does tomorrow, Maria. Well, we'll see about that, Mark. Nikki Haley, of course, reacted to DeSantis dropping out of the race. Here's a bit of that. Watch this. Can you hear that sound? That's the sound of a two-person race. A new CNN University of New Hampshire poll, however, finds Trump leading Haley by 11 points. Haley received endorsements from both Boston Globe and New Hampshire Union leader over the weekend, as well as one from a big-name celebrity. Watch this. Finding the person that we can be proud of, not only domestically, but on the national stage, Nikki Haley has to be that candidate. How cool is it to have Judge Judy endorse you? It really is. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, yesterday I spoke with Mark Penn and uh, Robert Haley from the Trafalgar Group, and, you know, uh, they were saying that Haley needs to be Mark, within six points of Trump here in New Hampshire to actually show that her campaign should live another day. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know that Nikki Haley has much of a chance left. To be honest, I'm, I'm surprised she hasn't suspended her campaign as well. Uh, look, I, I think a lot of people appreciate her personality. She, she has a great presence. I thought she was very strong on what has been the most important issue over the last few years when you look at the midterms, which obviously is abortion. But beyond that, in my opinion, I think she's run a very flawed campaign. I mean, some of, like, the bedrocks of her campaign are, number one, fiscal discipline. And there's not a single governor that was on the very first debate stage that spent more money than she did in South Carolina. And, and mm. then beyond that, you know, she, she's been running on being the foreign policy guru. And Vivek skewered her. You know, about a month ago, when, when he asked her to name three provinces in Ukraine, and she was unable to do that. So I, I think from that standpoint, you know, things are kind of working against her. I think at the end of the day, this is Trump, and we'll see what happens from here. Yeah, we sure will.